The American story is seen as, as at best aspirational, at worst, I think some people really believe that it's a, it's a, it's a lie. The U.S. is a fundamentally unequal society. The promise of justice and liberty for all has not been fulfilled. This idea of elections and voting and, and just fundamentally democracy having a racial dimension to it, it was baked in from the beginning. The Constitution provided rights for, uh, at the time, were property-owning white men. So these were men who had wealth. So poor whites, of course, those who were enslaved, did not have uh, the, the right to vote. We fast forward to the, the uh, 14th Amendment and the 15th Amendment, even the 19th Amendment, um, all of which expanded voting. But in practice, it's not until we get to the Voting Rights Act that we see an enforcement um, and we see that states are uh, enacting laws uh, in the federal government as well to stop people from putting things in place like poll taxes and literacy tests and grandfather clauses. People in the, in the communities where we were volunteering, they had physical access to the site. It was near to them, but the site was not prepared for them to vote. misinformation, a lot of long lines, people getting tired, people having other things to do, people having to go to work, um, that just makes that access not be equal for everyone. We currently have in the United States about 6.1 million Americans who have been disenfranchised because they have a felony conviction. And when we look at the fact that the majority of people who are incarcerated in this country are people of color, specifically black men, and that is who is losing the right to vote. Uh, you, you can't help but see that this idea of race being under considered is, is not true. It's actually considered very much and baked into the system. What we've seen is that people will regain the right to vote after they have served their time. They are now re-entered into society. They should be eligible to vote, but we see that other barriers are, are put up for them. I do think that campaigns that uh, tap into that rhetoric of law and order are signaling to their base that we are going to continue to control people of color. This idea that, that people are somehow broken and they're a problem and we either need to make them better or we need to have policies that hold them down. Due to defunding of the police department, we're sorry, but no one is here to take your call. And so that's where you get the law and order. And so, yes, I do think police do not make communities more safe. And that is something that I feel both sides really struggle um, to, to come to terms with. There is a history to show that black and brown people tend to vote Democrat, but that used to be flipped. Um, and it's possible that it could, that it could flip again. The voting public in the United States is at an inflection point, and so history may not may not actually give us uh, an understanding of what we can expect in the future. We understand, and I understand, that change is often incremental, but that doesn't mean that we can't push for radical change. It doesn't mean that that we shouldn't have a more bold vision of eliminating racial inequality. So the question is, do people want to be privilege more than they want to survive. I think about James Baldwin who said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced.